Good morning. Hearty welcome to this class on Jesuit education. I'm Father Suraj, a Jesuit belong to the Kerala province. Presently, I'm working in St. Joseph Boys High Secondary School, Calicut. In this class, I would like to expose the characteristics of Jesuit education. The characteristics of Jesuit education. The characteristics of Jesuit education was published in 1986 as a charter for Jesuit schools. It is based on the life and writings of the Jesuit founder, St. Ignatius of Loyola. It is based on the history of Jesuit education since the first school was founded at Messina in Sicily in 1548. And it is based on the best modern day practice. The characteristics offers a vision of Jesuit education for our own times. The document contains 28 characteristics organized in nine sessions. But I'm not going to expose all the 28 characteristics here. Instead, I sorted out the most important and relevant point and put them under three titles. And they are the vision of Jesuit education, caring for the individual, we call it in Latin cura personalis, teachers in a Jesuit school. But before going to the characteristics, let us familiar us with some of the terms, concepts, ideas, and names in the Jesuit tradition. First, St. Ignatius of Loyola. I know most of you know St. Ignatius of Loyola, but still, uh, let us have a look at his biography. He was born in 1491 of a Basque noble family, chose a life of nobility and fame until wounded at the Battle of Pamplona in 1521. And during the long period of recovery, he underwent, underwent a spiritual conversion. He lived as a hermit at Mandriza, where he began to see how God was active in his life. His notes from this time became the classic spiritual exercises. With companions, he founded the Society of Jesus in 1540. Ignatius spent the rest of his life developing and governing this new order, and he died in 1556. Next, the Society of Jesus. The Society of Jesus, often known simply as the Society of the Jesuits, is a religious order of the Catholic Church. It was founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola. The members are called Jesuits. The society is engaged in apostolic ministry in 112 nations. Jesuits work in education, founding schools, colleges, universities, and seminaries, research and cultural pursuits. Jesuits also give retreats Ministers in hospitals and parishes sponsor direct social ministries and promote ecumenical and interreligious dialogue. Now, let us have a look at a small video about Jesuits. Few know that the Jesuit order, also known as the Society of Jesus, is the largest congregation that exists in the Catholic Church. It has 16,000 members. It was founded over 480 years ago by St. Ignatius of Loyola, and his spirituality continues to fascinate thousands of people. When I met the Jesuits, what impressed me was that they were living a life worth living. I was also impressed by the spiritual experience, the spiritual exercises. In doing them, I realized this was what I wanted to do with my life. Father Antonio Spadaro is one of the most active Jesuits on social networks, and he runs one of the oldest intellectual magazines that exist, La Civiltà Cattolica, which is also the initiative of the Society of Jesus. It's hard to describe the life of a Jesuit, because each one is different. There are those who study or teach. 
those who work with immigrants or the poor, those who work in an office or others who have a different sort of pastoral work. The most astounding part of the Society of Jesus is that each of us does a different job. There is no Jesuit model, but each offers the talents he has received. In order to understand it, one must see that besides parishes and missions, the Society of Jesus has 231 universities worldwide, and the Jesuit Refugee Service helps at least half a million people in 57 countries. Father Spadaro says one trait the Jesuits have in common is a very strong spiritual experience, which is the discovery of themselves as sinners, but saved by the Lord. Saint Ignatius is not the founder of the Society of Jesus in the classical sense of the term. He lived a spiritual experience and shared it with his friends, college classmates, with those whom he shared money, food, classes. Gradually the group was consolidated and decided to go to the Holy Land to do apostolate. But as St. Ignatius could not sail to the Holy Land, the group stood at the complete disposal of the Pope to work in what the Church needed. Obedience to the Pope is their fourth vow, which is added to the existing poverty, chastity and obedience vows. Since then, in the DNA of the Jesuits, there is versatility to not be afraid of borders and to remain obedient to the Pope. Spiritual Exercises It is a small book in which St. Ignatius collected his notes, reflections, prayers and rules for people who wish to learn to engage with God and find freedom. Magis in Latin means more, is the Ignatian principle that in order to be fully human and fully alive in the ways God calls us to be, we should always seek to be more, do more, go deeper. Cura personalis, care for the person, is the characteristic way in which Jesuit works, including schools, aim to respond to the full range of needs that people have, that is, the physical, social, emotional, intellectual, as we as the spiritual. Discernment is the core of Ignatian spirituality. It describes the practice of raising up the pros and cons of a decision in order to know the better path to take, which accords more with what God decides for me and throws me towards God. In order to discern, I need to be attentive to my experience and to free myself from what Ignatius calls attachments, by which he means preferences, comforts, principles, presumptions, which can get in the way of true freedom. Reflection, Ignatius underlines the importance of taking time to reflect to be attentive to one's own experience. From this attentiveness, we begin to notice what is truly good for us and what is not good for us, what leads us towards God and what alienates us from God. Reflection is a basis for discernment. Men and women for others is a phrase of Father Pedro Arupe. Father Pedro Arupe was a former superior general of the Society of Jesus. He made this while addressing former students of the world's Jesuit schools in which he challenged them to use their Jesuit education for the benefit of others to be agents of change. Ratio Studiorum was the original blueprint for Jesuit schools published in 1599. It sets out the responsibilities and principles by which each person in a Jesuit school should work. Faith that does justice. The idea that Christian faith cannot have integrity without action for social justice. So these are some of the terms, concepts and ideas and names which are important in your journey as a Jesuit teacher. Now let us have a look at some of the important milestones in the history of the Society of Jesus. 1540, Society of Jesus is founded. 1548, first school in Messina, Italy. 1551, uh, Roman College in Rome. Today it is known as the Gregorian University. 
1556, Ignatius dies. There were around 35 colleges. 1599, Ratio Studiorum is promulgated and there were 245 schools. 1773, Pope Clement XIV suppressed the society and that time there were 800 schools. 1814, Pope Pius VII restored the society of Jesus. 1833, 45 schools and today 2020 there are 2300 schools in 67 countries now let's have a look at a small video about the beginnings of jesuit education <laughs> In 1548, ten members of the recently founded Society of Jesus opened the first Jesuit school in Messina in Sicily. That event would have immense repercussions on the character of the Society of Jesus, giving it a new and quite special relationship to culture. But it was also a crucial event in the history of schooling within the Catholic Church and Western civilization. Within a few years, the Jesuits had opened some 30 more primary, secondary schools. They also established the Roman College, which would develop into the first real Jesuit university known as the Gregorian. In Rome, they hired Palestrina as the music teacher and chapel master for their students. And later in Paris, they did the same for Charpentier. They were the teachers of Descartes, Molière, and Voltaire. In Latin America, they had constructed magnificent schools of stone and brick with huge libraries before any serious school of any kind had been founded in the British colonies. They became the first teaching order within the Catholic Church appealing to the masses. As successful as the Jesuits are in education, that was not Ignatius' original goal for his companions. I hope... Uh... The previous slides and videos gave you a clear picture about the uh, Jesuit education, its beginnings, and the Jesuit way of life. Dear teachers, you are not just a teacher of the institution you work. You are part of a global network of Jesuit schools who live out the vision of St. Ignatius through their institutions. So let us go back to the topic, the characteristics of Jesuit education. As I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to expose these three points from the characteristics of Jesuit education. They are the vision of Jesuit education, caring for the individual teachers in a Jesuit school. In the introductory part of the characteristics of Jesuit education, it is presented like this way. A distinctive spirit still marks any school which can truly be called Jesuit. A very different and unique spirit marks any school. And what is that distinctive spirit? We can discover that distinctive spirit through reflection on the lived experience of Ignatius on the ways in which that lived experience was shared with others, on the ways in which Ignatius himself applied his vision to education, on the ways in which this vision has been developed and applied to education in the course of history, including our present times. A common spirit lies behind a pedagogy, curriculum and school life. The vision of Jesuit education. Finding God in all things. Finding God in all things is the core of Ignatian spirituality and is rooted in our growing awareness that God can found in everyone, in every place and in everything. Ignatius was convinced that God deals directly with us in our experience. This conviction 
rested on his profound realization that God is working in everything that exists. This is why the spirit of Jesuit education is often described as finding God in all things. Let us watch a video which can deepen our knowledge on finding God in all things. Finding God in all things is at the core of Ignatian spirituality and is rooted in our growing awareness that God can be found in every one, in every place, and in everything. When we learn to pay more attention to God, we become more thankful and reverent, and through this we become more devoted and more deeply in love with our Creator. This idea sprang from the spiritual exercises that Ignatius wrote during his long spiritual journey at Manresa in Spain. He was drawn to the realization that God loved him where he was at that time and not where he would be tomorrow. Once that was established and believed, then the profound questions such as, do I fit here? Do I belong? Is this what defines me? Slowly began to be answered. I've learned that teaching and listening are the easiest ways to become open to learning and speaking. I've learned to take critique, expect quality, and share in a community that will be meaningful for the rest of my life. My respect for a Jesuit education unites me with many of my classmates in skill sets and dedication to improving the world around us. Ryan O'Halloran, Regis High School, New York City. Well, I think the, the reason the schools are successful comes from this notion of finding God in all things. And that when you say something like that, choosing to, uh, we are finding God in all things, that then science becomes sacred, math becomes sacred. Certainly in the early schools, drama becomes sacred. The study of languages, the study of history becomes sacred. It's not something that is secular. You would say you're finding God in all things by, by involving yourself in this study. And I think that was an answer at that time. The challenge to say, how are we going to see God active in the world and immerse ourselves in God's activity? One of the great things about Jesuit spirituality is that it's very flexible, it's very accessible, and it's very inviting. And so once you describe to people this notion of finding God in all things, uh, the rest comes naturally. Uh, God is not to be contained solely within the walls of a church or reading scripture or going to mass or going to whatever religious services uh, you know, that, that are part of your tradition. God is found in all things. Uh, it's the great insight um, of many Christian spiritual masters, but especially Ignatius. God is found uh, in nature, in your relationships, in work, uh, in your family, uh, uh, as well as in your prayer and in Mass. And so it's very inviting, and uh, it's inviting to all comers, basically. The way of Ignatius meets people uh, wherever they, they are along the path to God. And it's that that I think makes it so flexible uh, and, and so wonderful and so successful, frankly. But I think about 17 students said, you know, it's like this finding God in all things. It was, it was really um, pretty cool that, that it was such a natural thing for them to have this epiphany of, of Ignatian principles that they had heard before, they might have been taught something about it before, but when we actually did a contemplation, it was a eureka moment of, oh, that's, that's it. That's the thing. That's finding goodness in everything. That's God. If we adopted this worldview of finding God in all things, science becomes sacred, Max becomes sacred, trauma becomes sacred, study of languages and study of history becomes sacred. It is not something that is secular. And from this vision of St. Ignatius, the characteristics of education has formulated the following points. Jesuit education affirms the radical goodness of the world charged with the grandeur, the goodness of God, 
and it regards every element of creation as worthy of study and contemplation capable of endless exploration so education in a jesuit school tries to create a sense of wonder and mystery in learning about god's creation god is especially revealed in the human mystery of the person created in the image and likeness of god jesuit education therefore probes the meaning of human life and is concerned with the total formation of each student as an individual personally loved by god jesuit education proposes jesus christ as a model of human life everyone can draw inspiration and learn about commitment from the life and teaching of jesus christ jesuit education is preparation for life it is concerned with the ways in which students will make use of their formation in the service of others the success of jesuit education is measured not in terms of academic performances of students or professional competence of teachers but rather in terms of this quality of life service of others the curriculum is centered on the person on the student rather than on the material to be covered each student is allowed to develop and to accomplish objectives at a pace suited to individual ability and the characteristics of his or her own personality in a jesuit school a teacher will promote spiritual vision of the world in the face of materialism a concern for others in the face of egoism simplicity in the face of consumerism the cause of the poor in the face of social injustice you will carry these values in your classroom along with the subject you teach another important vision of jesuit education is magis the latin word magis means doing the more the greater according to james martin when you work give you all when you make plans plan boldly and when you dream dream big in jesuit education the criteria of excellence is applied to all areas of school life school policies are such that they create an ambience or climate which will promote excellence but more of magis does not imply comparison with others or measurement of progress against an absolute standard rather it is the fullest possible development of each person's individual capacities at at each stage of life the commitment to excellence in intellectual rigor and all aspects of the enterprise is at the heart of jesuit educational philosophy so jesuit education encourages students to develop their talents as fully as possible and to use those skips in the spirit of what more can i do what more can i give so the staff and students witness to matches in the generosity with the time and energy in the compassion and care of others and in their diligence at academic work a traditional aim of jesuit education has been to train leaders but today our aim is to educate leaders in service the jesuit school will help students to develop the qualities of mind and heart to work with others for the good of all jesuit education tries to instill a joy in learning and a desire to learn that will remain beyond the days in school so education is a lifelong process so far i spoke about the vision of jesuit education 
I would like to give you the summary of what I have spoken so far. The spirit of Jesuit education is finding God in all things. Jesus Christ is proposed as a model of human life. The Jesuit curriculum is centered on the person rather than on the material to be covered. The aim of Jesuit education is a formation in the service of others. Commitment to excellence, matches is the heart of Jesuit educational philosophy. The Jesuit school will help students to develop the qualities of mind and heart that will enable them to work with others for the good of all. Jesuit education instill a joy in learning and a desire to learn, caring for their individual Kura Personalis. Kura Personalis is a Latin phrase that translates as care for the entire person. Kura Personalis suggests individualized attention to the needs of the other. The expression is a hallmark of Ignatian spirituality. Jesuit education recognizes three developmental stages, intellectual, affective and spiritual growth, and assists each student to mature gradually in all these areas. Thus, the curriculum is centered on the person, on the student, rather than on the material to be covered. Each student is allowed to develop and accomplish objectives at a pace suited to individual ability and the characteristics of his or her own personality. When we apply Kura personalities, we develop the personal development through the training of character and will, overcoming selfishness and lack of concern for others, and developing the freedom that respects others and accepts responsibility. Importance is given for self-discipline that is expected from each student and which has to be manifested in intellectual rigor, serious study and conduct toward others that recognizes the human dignity of each individual. Concern for total human development stresses the happiness in life that is a result of a responsible use of freedom. The students are helped in their effort to discover prejudice and limited vision on the one hand and evaluate relative goods and competing values on the other. While they accept their grips and develop them, students also accept limitations and overcome these as far as possible. So we have seen here the meaning of Kura Personalis is a care for the entire person. As Jesuit teachers, you are called to apply Kura Personalis in the classroom and also with your students. As a responsible Jesuit educator, you have to recognize the three development, developmental stages, intellectual, affective and spiritual growth, and assist the students to mature gradually in all these three areas. And you have to allow each student to develop and accomplish objectives at a pace suited to individual ability and the characteristics of his or her own personality. Core personalis, I think, is one of the great um, traditions of the Society of Jesus. It really means care of the person, but it's care of the whole person. It's not simply the mind. It's not simply, you know, cramming facts into someone's head. And I think even uh, no teacher would say that's the purpose of education. But it's not simply 
educating the student in the classroom. It's, it's the moral education, uh, the spiritual education, the physical education, the whole person really. I believe that if a teacher believes that these children are individuals who are human beings, who deserve to be treated with dignity, respect, um, that they will respond. I believe that teachers have to be someone they can trust. Um, they don't have to be the best buddy to the child, but they need to be somebody that they can trust to help them to grow into an adult, that they can't befriend them in a manner as to say, behave like somebody their own age, but to befriend them in a manner that says, I'm an adult, you're a child, I, and but I have expectations for you, and but I will be here for you no matter what. I will help you no matter what. I think the one thing that they'll feel is that their teachers and their coaches and administrators and staff um, cared about their whole being, that, um, that they were loved and cared for um, regardless of what their GPA is and regardless of what they could do or could not do. You know, you could just tell a per by a person's demeanor. You can see something in them that's raw, that's genuine. And I think that teachers saw that in me and were able to look past and say, you know what, okay, I understand you're having a hard time. Let me help you. And I think that helped a lot. And there were teachers who didn't cut slack, and that also helped, you know. We're attending to their needs, their mental, their spiritual needs, and for some, their physical needs. You know, and um, we're helping them, instilling them hope for the future, um, a desire for a better life for themselves and their families and for the people. I think, um, first of all, going back to that Ignatian principle of care of the person, that's a big challenge and one that never gets old, to know each student by name. I mean, what a beautiful God image. I've called you by your name. You're precious in my sight. So, big ideal, but what if we could try to do that more? The preciousness, calling students by name, knowing them. Uh, through their work, through their conversation, through their writing, through their struggles, through their imperfections. Um, so I think that's part of it, knowing them by name, the way God knows us by name, at least trying to do them. There are all kinds of schools that have followed the ratio, but may not have had the Kura personalis that the Jesuits have been known for. The Kura personalis that the Jesuits have been known for, I believe, come from Ignatius himself. If you, if you read the letters that St. Ignatius wrote to his peers, um, you see a, a genuine care for their spiritual well-being. It's that kind of care that Ignatius exhibits to the people in the, in the early Jesuits that I think then translate, translates back to the schools um, because they'd say, this is, how you, this is how you care. I listen to how your life is going. And then I'd say, this is how you pray through something like this. This is how uh, we can work through this, uh, how we can work through this together. Care persons, you always think it's immediately care for the whole person. So you don't just go to school to study books. You don't just go to school to have a social life. And you don't just go to school, you know, because your parents say so. It's something, it really, you're supposed to develop as an entire person, academically, socially, spiritually. I have faith that um, making a heart-to-heart -heart connection with them will be recognized, um, maybe not consciously on their part, you know, maybe they don't, they, they probably don't consciously say, boy, you know, coach really went out of his way there to, to make a connection with me on a personal level instead of critiquing my ability on the football field. But, but those lessons are, are absorbed, even if they're not necessarily processed intellectually, I think those lessons are absorbed. And it's something that those young men are going to take away with them. And it might not be until years later, as I did, look back on, on some of the coaches that I had and say, you know, maybe I didn't become the best football player I could have been and, and wasn't a part of a championship team, but I owe who I am today in part to the lessons that I learned from, from those coaches, even though I didn't really recognize them at the time. As I would remind myself, they're searching. They're searching. They're looking. They're looking to fit in. They're looking um, 
for friends, they, they want to be accepted, etc. That, that that teenage experience, I think, speaks to a desire in them uh, that ultimately is God. Last year I was struggling in class a little bit in my English class. And, you know, I was a freshman and I had homeschooled all my life, so I, I was a little shy because it was in the beginning of the year and I didn't know many people. And my teacher came up to me and asked me if I needed any help with the subject. And, and I said, yeah, and that started my, my energy to, you know, make more friends there and just be a better student. Career personnels, I mean, uh, there's certain ways that communication gets done that there's sort of a pattern about how to get word out about something. But as far as the job of Coro Personalis, we hopefully are communicating to everybody that it's everybody's job. The people here have made me feel comfortable enough to really be myself or as, oppo as opposed to um, being in a place that really makes me feel uncomfortable and make me want to hold back and not be who I actually am. It's like some days I do that well and some days I don't. Um, but without that, I would say as a teacher, if the student doesn't know I'm presuming goodwill in them, they won't buy what I'm saying. They won't trust me enough to come with the question. It's what changes me as a teacher from somebody who they can come and maybe ask a question about simple, you know, a memorization, to maybe somebody who comes into me and says, oh, we talked about this in class and for whatever reason I trust you and right now I've fallen in love for the first time. Or um, I've uh, had a horrible argument with my parents last night. We argued for five hours. We left screaming and yelling at each other. I cried all last night at sleep and life is really hard right now. Teachers in a Jesuit school the role and identity of a teacher in a Jesuit school. The quality of the relationship between the guide of the spiritual exercise and the person making them is a model for relationship between teacher and student. Like the guide of the spiritual exercises, the teacher is at the service of the students alert to detect special gifts or special difficulties, personally concerned and assisting in the development of the inner potential of each individual student. In a Jesuit school, teachers are more than academic guides. They are involved in the lives of the students, taking a personal interest in the intellectual, affective, moral and spiritual development of every student, helping each one to develop a sense of self-worth and to become a responsible individual. The teachers are ready to listen to their cares and concerns about the meaning of life, to share their joys and sorrows. In these and other ways, Teachers guide students in their development of a set of values leading to life decisions that go beyond self and that include a concern for the needs of others. Teachers try to live in a way that offers an example to the students and they are willing to share their own life experiences. Kura personalis remains a basic characteristic of Jesuit education. The task of a Jesuit teacher is to help each student to become an independent learner, to assume the responsibility for his or her own education. Teachers assist students in, the, in this growth by being ready to challenge them, helping students to reflect on personal experiences. All teachers share a responsibility for the religious dimension of the school since God can be found in all things. Teachers try to become more conscious of the faith that does justice so that they can provide students with the intellectual, moral and spiritual formation that will enable them to make a commitment to service that will make them 
agents of change lay people need to have an understanding of ignatian spirituality of jesuit educational history and traditions and jesuit's life an educator in the jesuit tradition is encouraged to exercise great freedom and imagination in the choice of teaching techniques pedagogical methods etc the teachers witness to excellence by joining growth in professional competence to growth in dedication in a jesuit school there is a willingness on the part of both lay people and jesuits to assume appropriate responsibilities to work together in leadership and in service efforts are made to achieve a true union of minds and hearts and to work together as a single apostolic body in the formation of students as far as possible people chosen to join the educational community in the jesuit school will be men and women capable of understanding its distinctive nature and of contributing to the implementation of characteristics that result from the ignatian vision so we have seen the role and identity of a teacher in a jesuit school this is what we have discussed and seen so far a jesuit teacher is at the service of the students they involve in the lives of the students taking a personal interest in the intellectual affective moral and spiritual development of every student teachers are ready to listen to their cares and concern about the meaning of life to share their joys and sorrows they live in a way that offers an example to the students teachers in a jesuit school help each student to become an independent learner they help the students to reflect on personal experience they have a good understanding of ignatian spirituality of jesuit educational history and traditions and jesuit life teachers in a jesuit school exercise great freedom and imagination there is a union of minds and hearts and to work together as a single apostolic body in the formation of students teachers in a jesuit school are men and women capable of understanding the distinctive nature of jesuit education conclusion a description of the characteristics of jesuit education can never be perfect and can never be final but a growing understanding of the heritage of these schools the ignatian vision applied to education can be the motivation to renew dedication to this work and renewed willingness to undertake those tasks which will make it ever more effective i wish you all the best some questions for reflections what stuck you most about the videos or the slides ignatius was motivated by a passion to set the world on fire and to help souls but what passion motivates or sustains your work in a subject area in your encounters with students in your workplace how does kura personalities shine through your work as an ignatian jesuit educator thank you so much thank you for watching this video if you have any doubts any questions or if you want to give me any suggestions kindly write to me suraj.dominic@gmail.com or whatsapp me 7994006762 thank you so much and all the best